there are few games as integral to the online gaming community as Roblox. After experiencing a rapid rise in popularity in the 2010s, the game has cemented itself as a staple of online culture, giving rise to lucrative physical merchandising deals, launching entire YouTube careers. Guys, being a Roblox YouTuber is not so... <laughs> Wait, let me start over. And even collaborating with some of the biggest celebrities and brands of the last 20 years. The success of Roblox is simply undeniable. But, being as large of a franchise as it is, Roblox is not without its controversies. Most of the criticism has been towards the game itself, with many pointing out its predatory business model, the lack of proper moderation for the website, and its exploitation of those who create games on the platform. There may be some valid criticisms within those subjects, but that is not the topic of today's video. While many older individuals enjoy Roblox, it's no secret that the game is primarily targeted towards a younger demographic. And with that young player base comes individuals who seek to insert themselves into it and abuse their position of power. What we will be discussing is the Roblox community itself and diving into some of the predatory and sick individuals that reside within it. Whether they be YouTubers, Roblox developers, or members of the community, these are the Roblox Degenerates. German-born Kelvis Garmanian, better known by his screen name Kalogish, started his online career in 2018 with the creation of his YouTube channel. Like many who began to create videos on the platform, he struggled to gain much traction at first, seeing only mild success during his first couple of years on the website. However, his luck would soon change, creating a few successful videos that garnered a sizable amount of views. These videos covered a range of topics pertaining to Roblox, from comedic gaming videos to news about additional content added to his favorite games. The most popular of these uploads were trolling videos, in which he pretended to be a much more inexperienced player, messing with those who underestimated him with in the game. Yo guys, Naruto is here dude. Oh my god, I have to ask him to raid Area 51 with me. Although primarily a Roblox YouTuber, Kalogish also found success through the game Friday Night Funkin' as well. The game was an overnight hit almost as soon as it was released, and soon gained a reputation for having an active and dedicated modding community. Kalogish, seeing the success of others who were playing the game, decided to hop onto this trend and would see widespread success creating highly edited comedic gaming videos. Oh, that's crossing the line. All right then. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Bro, that, that that looked funny. Okay. Now he's mad. All right. Bro, he still has a gunshot wound. Okay. Okay, that's my favorite song so far. Oddly enough, he still maintained his status as a Roblox YouTuber and would often combine the two games playing Roblox-themed mods of Friday Night Funkin', and playing Friday Night Funkin'-themed games within Roblox. It was a very strange hybrid of content, but oddly enough, it worked to his favor. In the span of one year, Kalogish went from gaining a couple of million views per month to gaining over 17, skyrocketing his once humble channel to over half a million subscribers. Seeing as his fan base was primarily made up of young fans who would watch almost anything he put out, Kalogish seemed to be doing quite well for himself. His success and popularity earned him a spot in the official Roblox Star program, as seen in his YouTube banner. A service for content creators provided by Roblox themselves, which gave him numerous in-game benefits and perks. It was safe to say that he had finally found his niche on YouTube, becoming one of the most consistent channels in the entire community. As we've come to learn though, with online fame comes a new level of scrutiny, and it wouldn't be long before his viral success would ironically lead to his downfall. In August of 2021, numerous Discord messages would be leaked online. These direct messages revealed Kalogish pressuring an underage fan into sending him nudes, as well as fantasizing about having sexual relations with them. Some of these messages were quite explicit, saying that she would be the perfect height for oral sex. In these messages, he also admitted to being in a relationship with a 14-year-old while being 18, an age gap which many would find reprehensible. Within the messages, his justification of it being that she was very mature for her age. Ironically, despite stating that he would wait until someone was 16 or 18 before having sexual relations with them, he would, later on, send messages pressuring the then 15-year-old fan into sending nude images of herself to him, at times even implying that he had actually received lewd images from her and had consistently masked masturbated to them. These allegations, of course, resulted in a wave of criticism from his peers, with many accusing him of using his influence as a creator to solicit sexual favors from fans, 
as well as criticizing his alleged previous relationship with a 14-year-old girl. As well as criticizing his alleged relationship with a 14-year-old girl. The story of Kilgish is one that is just sad to watch. Another person with a budding YouTube career who threw everything down the drain because of his own selfish desires. The story would also be picked up by Roblox RTC, a popular Roblox community news source primarily operating on Twitter. More screenshots would soon emerge of private Discord conversations in which he admitted to being in the wrong, further digging his grave in the eyes of his peers and the public. Many soon began to call for the cancellation of his partnership with Roblox, as well as for his ostracization from the community as a whole with both requests soon being fulfilled. Not only that, but his Discord partnership was quickly revoked, with his accounts also being banned due to the explicit nature of what had happened. In an effort to defend himself, Kologish would appear in an interview with fellow Roblox creator Natty Forsyth in an attempt to clear his name and waive some of the criticism coming towards him. During the interview, Kologish further elaborated on the nature of his relationships, clarifying that he had originally initiated a relationship with an underage 14-year-old girl due to her being suicidal and him feeling an obligation to stay with her. He was 17 when the relationship began, though he did admit to staying within it after he turned 18. I'm not, like, doing anything like that. Nadine was a one-off thing that I did as a stupid-ass mistake because I was a horny, dumbass fucker, like, e-boy. Uh, and with Emmy, she was my first girlfriend, like, ever, like, ever, ever. Uh, I was 17, turning 18, and we met, and um, we just talked, blah, 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 and it just went this way. Like, I, I swear, it sounds so horrible now when I say it, but back then I didn't see that because I was 17. Yeah. I just thought, oh, a girl likes me, how nice, I've never had a girlfriend. Well, then we talked, and it just hit off. Um, but I have a little bit um trigger warning here, I don't know if you have it with suicidal things, but... Um, uh, I'm good. She was okay. Okay, she was um, suicidal, Emmy, and like really heavily. And I had to always like be there for her. And even after I turned 18, uh, around two months down the line, around February is when I broke it off. But I was still two months together with her after I was 18. Yeah. Again, I just felt bad leaving because I felt like if I did, I would like kill her. You know what I mean? With the whole Nadine thing. I can just reiterate it from my own head right now, so you know I'm not like fucking lying. First of all, I want to say I am 100% at fault, by the way, I'm not stupid, like, I know I am. In regards to the newer allegations of him sexually messaging a 15 year old while 20 years of age, he had no justifiable answer. It's, I not, did it's, what I it's, did. it's not really a defense that, um, you also were no, no, with I'm not, people I'm not above 18. Myself. No, no, I'm yeah, not defending myself. Yeah, but you said that you were also with people above, above 18, like, the issue is that Multiple. you're- Multiple, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The issue is that you were still open to kids. But she was the only one just because I knew her in my head already. Like, mm. like I didn't feel awful. And Discord makes this shit like where age doesn't hit as hard as in real life. Like, it just didn't click with me at all. And that's what my dumbass mistake was. It just didn't click. Throughout the 45 minute long conversation, Kologish both did and didn't admit guilt consistently confusing the ages of the girls he had contacted, and overall failed to provide any sort of solid explanation or defense for himself. Needless to say, this interview did little to impress the community, and in fact, made things quite a bit worse for him in the long run. In regards to his profitable YouTube career, that too would soon end, as his channel would be terminated for violating community guidelines soon after. Whether this termination is the result of the accusations levied against him isn't entirely clear, but for now, there seems to be no trace of Kologish online, leaving a bitter reminder of how quickly even the most respected members of a community can ruin their careers in an attempt to live out their fantasies. One of the things that differentiates Roblox from other online games is its focus on game creation. The idea behind Roblox is that users create playable games using a sort of built-in game development engine, using resources, textures, and sound effects provided by Roblox to create miniature gaming worlds for users to explore. This makes Roblox in and of itself less of a game and more of a platform for creating and sharing them. Seeing how the vast majority of people who play Roblox are not developers, it makes those who do develop games on the site much more influential within the community. After all, Roblox would not exist as a platform without them, leading these developers to have much more respect and power than the average user, as was the case with the Roblox game developer, Ma underscore Buckets. Although, he went by multiple multiple aliases during his time spent within the community. For the purposes of this video, we will simply be referring to him by his birth name of Andrew in order to prevent confusion. 
Andrew, as stated before, dipped his toes into the Roblox community as a game developer. The games he would release often would be comedic in nature, with many of them capitalizing on current trends or memes, such as his game Baldi Eats His Cereal, which garnered millions of plays and thousands of favorites. Some of his other games were created purely for shock value, however, such as the poorly aged game titled Grab the Child. Buy a capsule and see what's inside. It's a lonely child. Hey, what a surprise. Put him in a box or find some friends with so many children. The fun never ends. Grab the child, many child to collect. Grab the child, many child to collect. It's an awesome game by yours truly. I don't get on unreal child cruelty. He was not alone in his endeavors, however, often enlisting the help of numerous other Roblox developers and collaborating with them on other projects. While relatively unknown outside of Roblox, Andrew did draw a significant amount of attention for his games, garnering a respectable number of plays and favorites during his career. Although comedic, the games were enjoyed by many, and Andrew was a respected member within his niche. The first real cracks would begin to show in Andrew's online persona in June of 2019, when his main Roblox account was banned from the platform. According to Andrew himself, he had created numerous alternative anonymous accounts on Roblox over time in order to say extremely offensive and inappropriate things in a deliberate attempt to get the accounts banned, basically as just a game to see how far he could push his luck. The dude liked to do a bit of trolling. Eventually, this trolling would catch up with him, and for a few months, it would appear that Andrew would no longer be participating within the Roblox community. He would issue a statement in which he conceded that the ban was fair and that he was disappointed in himself for allowing his bad habit to get out of hand. He then asked for his followers to follow his Twitter account Drewaker for more updates about his activity and his whereabouts, implying that the Ma Bucket persona was over with. However, in early 2020, Andrew would make a Twitter poll asking his fans whether he should return to Roblox under an alternative account. As he would reveal, however, he had already been operating under a new account for months, creating more comedic games in an effort to recover the popularity he once had as a developer on the platform. This controversy, while relatively minor compared to some of the actions he was later exposed for, did provide an interesting look into Andrew's psychology. Despite being successful in his own right, he decided to throw it all away and risk being banned from his main platform to satisfy his own personal desires, without any regards for the consequences it would have on his career. Things would remain quiet for a while, as Andrew continued to publish games and participate in the community while managing to dodge being banned. However, behind these scenes, Andrew was participating in behavior that would later shock and disgust the entire community at large. And it all started with a Discord chat. As the story goes, Andrew had an alternative Twitter account named Lunar Cheesecake, where he would draw and share not safe for work furry pornography. <laughs> In the year of 2020, at the age of 22, Andrew initiated a conversation with a Discord user, calling them cute, and soon after proceeded to send not safe for work images he had drawn of his furry persona. Later, in the conversation, the user revealed to Andrew that they were in fact 14 after he asked for their age a fact Andrew had not known before sending the images. Despite this new knowledge, Andrew would shrug it off, downplaying the seriousness of the fact he had shared sexually explicit images with a minor, even continuing to speak with them. Over the course of the next few months, Andrew would consistently message this underage teenager. While at first he seemed to reserve himself, he would gradually become more and more comfortable sharing sexually explicit details about himself, fully knowledgeable of the facts that they were underage. He would take this a step further and actually send nude photographs of himself, further indulging in his fantasies. Andrew would also reveal his face multiple times throughout these conversations, a fact that will become very important later on. With his degeneracy in full swing, Andrew decided that he needed to step things up a bit in order to satisfy his sexual fantasies. In these screenshots pictured here, Andrew is clearly seen encouraging the young teenager to grope and sexually assault their younger sibling. After the 14-year-old teenager admitted to taking advantage of his brother while he was asleep, Andrew would also admit to ejaculating on his sister while she was asleep multiple times, as well as groping her, stating that it was fun and enjoyable for him to do so. He would go on to encourage the teen to assault their brother, stating that rape victims don't talk about their trauma. He would also state that he would be willing to have sexual relations with an 8-year-old child, and continued to engage in degenerate sexual behavior over the next few months. As December of 2021 rolled around, Andrew appeared to become nervous, however, finally severing all connections with the underage teenager after months of sexual degeneracy and predatory behavior. Maybe he thought that he would get away with it if he ran, but it was far too late to cover it up. 
These actions would be linked back to Andrew after he decided to send a photo of his full face over Discord. If you remember from earlier, Andrew had shifted his Roblox activity from Ma underscore Bucket to the Drewaker Twitter account. In September of 2020, the Drewaker account announced that he had created a private account for mutuals only, named Spewaker. Upon looking at the account's profile picture, you can clearly see what is undeniably the same person as the pedophilic furry Lunar Cheesecake in full view. In addition to this, the Lunar Cheesecake account had shown definitive knowledge of Roblox game development, at one point even revealing to this child how much revenue he made from his games, furthering the connection between the two personas. The dots would not be connected or publicly revealed until January of 2022, when a Roblox creator by the name of Jax released a video titled The Andrew Files Part 1, The Most Disgusting Roblox Predator. In it, Jax revealed the disgusting chat logs that had occurred between the two and provided a definitive link between Andrew's Lunar Cheesecake and the Roblox personas. Now, if you were just sitting in your chair going, this can't be Andrew, this guy is like a brother to me. Well, let me do the hard work for you and draw the connections. If that isn't enough for you, feel free to comment down below and I'd be happy to arrange a meeting with you where I can share more information. This, of course, caused a domino effect within the Roblox community, with many channels covering the new revelations and showing disgust that Andrew had managed to exist within their community for so long while his behavior went unnoticed. Later on, Jax would release another video confirming that there was in fact an ongoing police investigation into Andrew and that his actions had been reported to the authorities by him. Andrew's sister is safe. She is out of Andrew's harm and is in a safe place as of now. Second of all, there is currently an active investigation going on. The police are most certainly getting involved, although I can't say as many details as I'd like to. Just know that things are happening and we are moving in the right direction. In addition to this, yet another victim had come forward with their own experience, with many of the same disgusting behaviors being exhibited. Some of the more egregious messages include Andrew admitting to being a pedophile, one in which he advocated for the rape of children, as well as a sexual fantasy, and one in which he encouraged the person he was talking to to groom a 13-year-old girl. After being confronted on Discord by Jax, Andrew admitted that he was arrested for his behavior and that he was a registered sex offender. So I said, all right. And then immediately he goes into how he was, quote, arrested in December 2020 and spent a week in county prison and nine months on house arrest. And that he's taking government mandated therapy and has been sem since September, uh, every Wednesday at 5 p.m. PST, and that he's a registered sex offender and will be for 10 years. While it's difficult to prove whether this is true, the fact remains that Andrew did what he did, did not deny the allegations, and soon after disappeared entirely from social media. While his Roblox account has since been banned, his various Twitter accounts remain, though none of them have shown any activity since late 2021, and hopefully will remain inactive, with the hope being that Andrew never communicates with anyone online ever again. Ultimately, only time will tell if this is the case. Throughout Roblox's history, many games have come and gone, but a genre that surprisingly continues to be a very popular one is the first-person shooter genre. Although the stereotypical Roblox game is sort of a lazy cash grab designed to get children to reach for their parents' wallets, there is a large quantity of fast-paced first-person shooters that exist within the platform, and an active player base to provide demand for these games. Being called a cheater in FPS games is like, the biggest compliment you can get, and I like compliments, but you also get insulted a lot, which is also funny. Bro, I can't hit your head if I can't see you. <laughs> Many of these have their own class dynamics, a wide range of weapons with different abilities and stats, and various skins that players can earn. With parents more willing to allow their children to play Roblox instead of M-rated first-person shooters, these games have become a way of introducing many young gamers to the genre of FPS games as a whole, with many of them garnering significant player bases. One such game in this lucrative genre is the shooter Critical Strike. Although far from being the most popular shooter on Roblox as a whole, it has over time managed to rake in over 30 million plays, at one point housing an entire development team 
in order to keep up with the demand for fresh material for the game. Due to its popularity and widespread appeal, Epic Critical, the creator of Critical Strike, had made quite the reputation for himself. Being the creator of a popular game within Roblox lends someone a great deal of leverage within the community, but with that level of influence comes responsibility. And unfortunately, Epic Critical would succumb to the trappings of online success, like many that came before him. With a large platform that comes from a successful game, it's inevitable that a dedicated community begins to surround it. In recent years, this has taken the form of Discord servers, especially within the gaming space. Despite the fact that many of those playing this game were underaged, Epic Critical made the decision to include a Not Safe for Work channel within his Discord server. In 2018, a Discord user by the name of Ryu Ryu, who was at the time 15 years of age, came into contact with Epic. Allegedly, she became friends with Epic Critical after sending a picture of her thigh into the Not Safe for Work channel in the Discord and attracting his interest. He would continuously attempt to solicit nudes from her, making sexually charged comments towards her, such as stating that he had the urge to rape her. Later on, a friend of an ex would release her nude photos to the Not Safe for Work channel of Epic Critical's Discord. Although the images were quickly deleted by moderators as they were nude photos of a then 15-year-old girl, Epic himself would admit to saving them in a later private conversation. It was around this time that Epic Critical would make sexually charged comments publicly in the Discord to another underage girl by the screen name of Cinnamon Pug, calling her his lolly slave, and making comments about wanting to see her naked. It is important to note that there is some confusion about Epic Critical's age during this time period due to conflicting screenshots from Epic himself. In May of 2018, he claimed to be 18 years of age, yet would later admit to turning 18 on November 2nd of the same year. So, there is a potential that he was 17 years of age when this behavior first started. However, as some of his critics have pointed out, Regardless of legal technicalities and semantics, he still made the decision to have a Not Safe for Work channel on a Discord filled with minors. And to many, this piece of evidence is something that makes him worthy of criticism. Fast forward to early 2019. By this point, Epic Critical is definitively confirmed to be over the age of 18, and has begun to message another underage girl named Rosie. Based on testimonies, Rosie was often flirtatious with Epic Critical publicly, with her often being referred to by names such as Epic's Thought. It was around this time Epic made numerous attempts to solicit nude photographs from her, at one point even offering to pay her for nudes using Robux. There are also various screenshots of them flirting publicly, though whether anything was actually ever sent or received is conjecture, and cannot be definitively proven. That same year, Epic Critical would engage in erotic roleplay over Discord with a girl who was 13 years old at the time. This conversation would become increasingly sexual, culminating in Epic Critical sending a nude photograph of his genitals to her. He quickly deleted the photo, but the damage had already been done. A screenshot of the message was taken, and as a result, it was reported to Discord moderators. This would lead to Epic Critical's account on Discord being banned, though the real consequences for his actions would not actually occur until a year later. On March 5th, 2020, a Twitter user by the name of Wind of Miss made a tweet linking to various screenshots, a pastebin document created by one of the girls involved, and called Epic Critical a pedophile that needed to be ostracized from the Roblox community. Whether that term is accurate is largely up for debate within the online sphere. What wasn't debated is that Epic Critical's time in the Roblox community was over. In response, Epic would private his Twitter account and create a thread admitting to his mistakes stating that he was taking steps to become a better person. His social media accounts would soon be deactivated, and the development team behind Critical Strike disbanded as a result of the controversy. Soon after these events unfolded, a YouTuber by the name of Kaneko Kitten picked up on the story, and after doing research into the topic, decided to create a video calling Epic Critical out for his predatory behavior. Once again, this just reinstates the problem. Why are you having this not safe for work Discord chat and a Roblox Discord full of impressionable minors? These cases that I just mentioned are not even the worst ones, and the one that I really need to emphasize on is the one right now, which definitely 100% can help me classify this guy as guilty. The video itself would go on to garner over 1 million views, and would bring much attention to the story. Although he did deactivate all of his social media accounts, Epic Critical would remain on Roblox, changing his bio to an explanation that he will continue to update the game and will continue to do so until its final completion. Since the allegations have been dropped today, it seems that he has maintained this promise and doesn't seem to be keen on involving himself in any online sexual encounters anytime soon. But once again, only time will tell.
As with any community online, Roblox is a place where multi-talented people can gather to show their appreciation for the game. Sometimes this can take the form of games on the platform itself, fan art, and the creation of YouTube videos about the game. Over the past few years, a popular medium that has been used to pay homage to the community has been animation. Today, there are many popular channels that garner hundreds of thousands of views per upload by creating 3D animations based on Roblox. Those of you watching may have even stumbled across a few of these, as some of them have garnered quite a bit of popularity. Eight years ago, however, it was a much different story. The YouTube landscape was much different, and the Roblox community was not nearly the size it is now. To put it simply, there wasn't a whole lot of motivation to create time-consuming animations based on Roblox other than out of passion for the game. In an effort to strengthen their community and provide a platform for the artistic people within it, Roblox held an annual competition known as the Bloxy Awards. These awards were given to those who created unique and interesting films, animations, or videos relating to Roblox. During this time period, one individual, in particular, stood out and arguably popularized his respective format, and his name was Mr. Obvious. He originally rose to popularity during Roblox's first real push into the mainstream by creating 3D fan animations, managing to win both the 2013 and 2014 Bloxy Awards. You were my only friend. I'm just an ordinary boy with nothing to do. Hey, XX number to survive. Do you mind baking me a cake? I'm hungry. No, Cherry, can't you see? I'm really busy trying to make this video. He has the distinction of being one of the first players to be officially recognized for their creative works by the game they loved, and quickly became a popular figure in the community. In fact, he was one of the most popular of his day. Though he was preoccupied with other endeavors, Mr. Obvious was in general finally remembered for his contributions, and many simply forgot about his existence as the years passed as the production of animations slowed down. But behind the cheerful and lighthearted nature of his animations was a dark desire that would soon result in a permanent outing from his community. In the year 2017, a YouTuber by the name of Ruben Sim was contacted by multiple individuals who claimed to have information regarding Mr. Obvious. Allegedly, while being 22 years of age, he had sexually harassed an underage girl over social media. Many of these screenshots were censored due to the victim wishing to remain anonymous. Throughout the time he was messaging her, Mr. Obvious continuously pressured the young girl into sexual acts, pressuring her into performing erotic roleplay with him and asking for nude photographs. These messages would eventually culminate in Mr. Obvious sending a video of him stroking his dick through his underwear to her. And while the actual video itself is not publicly released, the audio was, and it is pretty disturbing. He sends me a video of Mr. Obvious rubbing his penis through his underwear. Rather than show the video, I'm going to let you listen to the audio so you can get an idea of how disturbing this actually is. So, I want you to know that the bottom part here is really sensitive, and the head is the most, most sensitive. If, eh, my word's low. But yeah, just do this, and it's super freaking delicious and hot. So, immediately after this, X sent me six screenshots of obvious soliciting Y, sexually soliciting Y, and another video of him masturbating, this time with his penis actually exposed. These sexually explicit messages were not limited to one particular victim. In fact, there were multiple people who stepped forward to share their experiences with him, most of them being young girls. Apparently, using a Discord server run by a fellow member of the community to farm potential targets. In these numerous conversations, Mr. Obvious continuously made sexual remarks and attempted to solicit sexual favors from all of them. After reviewing all of this information, Ruben reached out to Mr. Obvious directly for comment and was met with anger, belligerence, and hostility. Oddly enough, Mr. Obvious claimed to actually be a girl. It's unclear what the intended goal was behind this, as he had previously never made an attempt to correct people who assumed he was a male and still went by the screen name Mr. Obvious. After this encounter, Ruben decided to gather all of the information he had access to and submits it evidence to the proper authorities in an attempt to hold the perpetrator accountable for his actions, and, of course, publicly released the information in his YouTube video on the same topic. I messaged him on Twitter back in May, giving him a very stern warning that I knew what he did, and it'd be best if he didn't do it again. And what followed was obvious immediately getting hostile and agitated, to the point where he even tried to convince me that he's a girl. Now, um, <laughs> Mr. Obvious has included his voice in a lot of his videos, and judging by the way he interacts with people online, even before this whole incident started, he's definitely not a girl. This video shined a light upon Mr. Obvious, and drew quite a bit of attention to the topic. The perpetrator's public response, meanwhile, was to release a supposed 
warning letter written by his parents. This is a public warning letter to Reuben Sim, Gary Oak the Great. We are the parents of Mr. Obvious. Username, we have been notified of your cyber violation. You have committed serious crimes of defamation and privacy invasion. We demand that you immediately eliminate all private information and videos relating to Mr. Obvious, as well as desist from committing any further defamation and privacy invasion in the future. If your actions are not taken on your part, our lawyer will proceed to the next step to seek legal action against you and seek compensation for the damages you have caused. Mr. Obvious's parents. As of late 2021, the Mr. Obvious Roblox account has been banned, although his YouTube channel still remains, with the animations that once brought joy to the community still residing there to this very day. He has no known social media accounts, and whether an investigation was successfully conducted is unknown to the public. However, he serves as a grim and depressing reminder of how even the most wholesome of creators can have a very dark side to them. YouTuber Fave began his career in the early days of Roblox, creating an account all the way back in 2007, only one year after the game's initial release. With the Roblox community considered smaller than it is today, YouTube channels specifically dedicated to the game were much more rare. But this did little to stop Fave from doing just that. In the August of 2010, Fave uploaded a video to his current YouTube channel titled New YouTube, in which he, well, introduced his YouTube channel. From then on, Fave would post content somewhat consistently, releasing random videos having to do with Roblox to his extremely small fan base. However, he would begin to experience some level of success when he began to upload Roblox-themed skits, memes, and even small machinima-like videos to his channel. Please, help me. Hey, are you complaining about your ban? Yeah, screw the admins. I hate them. That ban was so unfair. I'm Shedletsky! A few years down the road, he would transition into creating more consistent commentary videos talking about Roblox news, drama, and really whatever he wanted to. Now we're gonna talk about an accident that caused an event item to be a free item for everyone. I mean, imagine your sponsor pays you a bunch of money to hold a whole Roblox event, and all of a sudden Roblox is like, nah, we're not gonna give you the item the way that they want it, we're just gonna put it on sale for free, on accident. This more consistent and streamlined content would cause his channel to garner a sizable and loyal fan base, with his page accumulating over half a million subscribers within the span of a few years. It was at this point that it seemed like his struggle to gain success and popularity within the community had finally paid off. He was a successful YouTuber whose opinion and content style was respected by his peers and his fanbase. His extensive knowledge of the game was matched by very few within the community, leading his channel to become one of the more respected of its kind, and he had a lot of promising prospects. However, behind the scenes, not all was well, and his actions would soon lead to one of the biggest exposures in the entire Roblox community. On July 30th, 2020, a video was posted by a YouTube user going by the name of Ellie, in which she accused Fave of attempting to use his audience to pressure her into a relationship. At the time, she was 17 and Fave 19. So the question may be why anyone cared. Well, the accusation itself is more so about his manipulative personality, with his repeated attempts to pressure her into a romantic relationship with him, despite her making it very clear that she did not desire to. These allegations would not immediately result in any punishment for Fave, as he simply ignored them and continued to upload as if nothing had happened. Hey there guys, Fave here, and you know, Roblox tends to get a really bad reputation from a lot of people for being like greedy and if you buy something and the item just goes away then you lose that Robux forever. And with people getting scammed every day on Roblox for years and years and years, it has people wondering, well how do I get a refund on Roblox? This appeared to work for a while, but it wouldn't be long before the controversy caught up with him. In early 2021, a Twitter account was created for the sole purpose of bringing attention to the fave allegations, releasing a large Google document detailing the experiences of numerous victims, and providing screenshots and evidence to back up the claims. While the allegations ranged in severity, they all shared a common theme of the behavior of him attempting to leverage his influence for acts of sexual or romantic interest. In one instance, Fave, while being age 19, was in a Discord conversation where he asked for the age of the girl he was talking to. When she replied 16, he remarked on the age gap between them, then later in the conversation proceeded to ask for her Snapchat. During the Snapchat conversation, Fave allegedly made numerous sexual comments, calling the girl a cum slut, and repeatedly stating that he was horny. 
In another instance, screenshots showed that Fave had acquired the nudes of a girl he believed to be 15 years of age over Snapchat, as well as making numerous sexual comments towards them. A couple years prior, at the age of 17, he had allegedly obtained pictures of a 13-year-old girl. Reading through the allegations, it's not hard to piece together a pattern of behavior. Fave would supposedly contact young girls on Discord, of course, usually ones within the Roblox community, add them on Snapchat, then pressure them for sexual favors. It can be assumed that he hoped the nature of Snapchat's disappearing messages would protect him and decrease the likelihood of him being caught. However, he failed to anticipate that photos were being taken of his messages and that his actions could eventually come back to haunt him. It is important to note that when this second wave of allegations was released and more prominent YouTubers within the Roblox community began to cover the topic, Fave did make a response to the allegations. While the actual response has been deleted, an archived version of the apology is on the exposed document. In it, he emphatically denies the allegations as false and stated that it was easy for Snapchat messages to be faked. He also did admit to being quote-unquote creepy, but maintained that he had never gone after anyone significantly younger than him. Fave's channel is still up on YouTube, though all of the comments have been disabled on his recent videos and he has not uploaded for over 10 months. Given the extreme backlash against him and his failed attempts to defend himself, it is unlikely he will return to his YouTube channel anytime soon thus ending the life cycle of one of the oldest Roblox gaming channels. That being said, as with many other creators, it's possible he could return with some evidence that would paint a grayer picture than the current black and white condemnation. But that remains to be seen for now. This channel is no stranger to controversial topics relating to degenerate behavior. The irony is that oftentimes, it's those who appear to be the most wholesome on the surface that end up revealing themselves to be far worse than anyone thought they could be. While many of the individuals we have covered in this video have actions that range in severity, it's hard not to feel nihilistic about the possibility your favorite creator could be guilty of something terrible. It never gets any easier to talk about, and it never gets any less uncomfortable of a fact to confront. No matter how many pedophiles, degenerates, and pathetic human beings are exposed to the world, there always seems to be one more. It's hard to understand what motivates the actions of some of these people, and depressing to think about how they threw their lives away, all to satisfy some sick desire they had, whether it be sexual, romantic, or somewhere in between. I've been Turkey Tom, thanks for watching. Leave me alone.